Okay, hello again, everyone. Um, we're kind of racing ahead here now, but I wanted to introduce uh, Joel Meyer from the Pacific Disaster Center. So he's here today to talk about um, AI, Pacific Disaster Center, Hot OSM, a Decade of DRR, and Early Warning System Collaboration. Thank you, Joel. Great, thank you so much, Myrie. Thank you for having me. And to Ian and the team, I want to say guten uh, tag, merci beaucoup, te demokasi, to all of our stakeholders. Uh, hopefully you can see fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not able to use my laptop. I've got a good screensaver of a big surfing picture because we come from the Pacific Disaster Center in the U.S. state of Hawaii and Maui. So greetings, uh, and it's such a privilege to be here. I want this to be interactive. I know a lot of you have phones and laptops. Uh, I'm going to give you a background on what we do. I think it would be a great time. I'm well aware that I stand between you and lunch and all the good food that we've gotten from our hosts here. But I want you, this to be interactive. Again, I want you to take a look at PDC, PDC underscore global on Twitter. So please feel free to, to, to hashtag and tweet as, as needed. Take a look at our website, of course, pdc.org. And again, we are the Pacific Disaster Center, but we work globally, so it's PDC Global. Uh, secondly, as I go to the next slide, I really want this to be interactive the sense that we've got a, great, a lot of great applications, and I always say that, that the humanitarian OpenStreetMap and OpenStreetMap data is really the foundation of the open data efforts that we do globally, both for disaster response and for attaining the SDGs. So with that in mind, you can see what we do and why we do it. We bridge between academia and science, and I always say in humanitarian response, we want to get the right data to the right people at the right time to make the right decision. So I'll let that sink in. And again, I look forward to taking questions later because one thing about being here is being here with mentors, uh, colleagues, and truly experts that we've all been learning together. I know this has been a great meeting for me. And you can see some background of what we do here. Also, if you have a phone, I know a lot of you do, um, a lot of what we do is called, uh, is under the umbrella of our Disaster Aware platform. If you're on a laptop, go to Disaster Aware PVC, you will find that. If you have a phone, look at our Disaster Alert app. And within all of our applications, OpenStreetMap data is foundational. So again, if you're looking at your phone, I hope you're looking at some of our great maps, and of course it's going to have our humanitarian OpenStreetMap data in there. Um, so this is a little bit of our background of what we do. In terms of why, I think it's a really good time to reflect, and I was thinking from our colleagues with, uh, with Humanitarian Open Street Map in Indonesia, uh, in Africa and elsewhere, that we do it to help uh, achieve the Sendai uh, framework, the SDGs. Uh, it was taken aback this morning when I was walking here. As you well know, there's going to be a lot of gatherings today uh, talking about climate change. And, you know, again, we all get busy. We're often quite technical. Uh, but I want to think about that idea that, you know, I was walking here this morning and I saw children that were going to this gathering and young children that were, again, in this case, advocating for, for being resilient. And the tools that we do, that we build, and that we build in collaboration with our partners, that is the why we do it. And here you can see some of the work we do. We do response efforts. We have a team in the Bahamas right now, a lot of us putting in long hours, getting data to our partners in the Bahamas. And whether it's there or whether it's in Indonesia, whether it's in Africa, uh, this is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and we want you to use our tools. But we also get the world ready for a changing world, a changing climate, and we call that our National Disaster Preparedness Baseline Assessment. Wouldn't it be novel if you took this amazing data store called uh, the OpenStreetMap data set, and you could look every five years and assess countries with an NDPBA, that we call it, quite a new acronym and a big one for you. Um, so we can actually see what was happening and we had data-driven deci data decisions with our colleagues from USAID and elsewhere. They've been really helpful in helping to implement this program. We've been able to do it now for 20% of the globe. And as I look across the group here, you know, from the HDX platform that CJ and his team have built to all of the open data from Humanitarian Open Street Map, I often often say it does take a village to build this, and we at PDC, we're global, we're about 50 people, and we have partnerships not only with Hot OSM, uh, we work with OCHA regionally and globally, uh, we work with the World Food Program, we work with industry. Thank you, Esri, for being here. Thank you to Microsoft. But again, we work in a lot of emergency operations center. Um, I also say we're always growing our team. I know we've got a lot of very smart people here, a lot of people bring a lot of experience. We are recruiting uh, with our colleagues at the AHA Center, which is in Jakarta. Uh, please talk to me after, uh, and we have some great opportunities there. Uh, I did want to mention again, on behalf 
uh, of our leadership who cannot be here, Dr. Aaron Huey and Mr. Chris Chiesa, um, we are growing our team, whether it's based on Maui, whether our DC office, and our growing efforts here in Europe throughout Africa. But this is a good look at what we do. When it, from the Innoware project now to the Philippines, we've got colleagues that were just there not too long ago. This is a good overview of the kind of, not only the relationships we have now, but we want to grow that. So again, meeting colleagues here from Nepal and elsewhere, uh, we look forward to growing this. Uh, as we say in Hawaiian, ohana. And ohana is that idea of a family. And uh, our team, we really believe that our relationships are personal. We've got a lot of great friends in this room. I'm meeting new friends who are doing great work from health sites to public health and elsewhere. But this is kind of a good, you know, to give you a nice little uh, screenshot of trying to get complex decision making uh, science into the hands of decision makers. And when you're busy in the Bahamas, or again, I, in my background is I had worked uh, probably 20 years as, a, as an aging geospatial guy. I am from a little town called Redlands, California, so you know what software I had used previously. And I also am a great advocate for open data tools. But again, when we look at getting complex data to people, whether it's in Nepal for the earthquake 2014-15, I worked a lot on the Ebola response then as well. Uh, the open, open uh, health data uh, could have been so much more helpful then. I'm so excited that we're going to use that data in our efforts globally. This is the type of data that we coalesce into things called emergency operation centers. I tend to work in a lot of them. I am from, from California, from Los Angeles and we value the technology and the diversity that we have in Los Angeles and using all these same techno technologies as well. But this idea of remote sensing, open data, getting data to the big screens, to your mobile phone. And this is what's an exciting time. Uh, we really want to get data that's meaningful. You know, and I know that's uh, probably the only, um, I think of Andre Verity from, from UNOCHA during the Haiti response when I was at the operations center in Geneva at WHO. That idea that we, when we do get the, all the data moving from the crisis mapping revolution over, we get that idea of red dot fever. And we want to make sure we don't just pile all the dots on the map. We want to get synthesized analysis that one person might have one question on the health side, somebody over here might be looking at logistics, and we want to get it to people that might be looking at the policy side, the strategic side, or also at the idea of a response. And we know in places like the Bahamas, we are responding now with colleagues, but we know that there'll be a recovery. We want to have that a data-informed recovery. I think all of you, and uh, hopefully I'm not holding you up for not only lunch, but more coffee, I know that you get uh, you know, also headaches, because I know the technology, part of the exciting time of all these technologies is trying to make them all work together. And I think that's where I think the hot OSM team is such a valuable partner in helping us connect the dots and learning from the Health Sites IO colleagues on how they built that amazing architecture. I also have to give a shout out to a lot of the colleagues that are, are looking forward, you know, to kind of be futurists and say, how do we move from what was then big data? GIS often had the big data side of it. In LA County, we, you know, again, we have two and a half million parcels. It was always big data. Um, but then the idea of the, of the social media for emergency management revolution, SMEM, crisis mappers and the like. Uh, my background working quite a bit with the standby task force, Hot OSM, and other colleagues who are really innovating in that space. That idea of Internet of Things and connectivity, who would have thought we'd have these supercomputers that are digital devices? And again, I hope you're looking at your mobile phones now and looking at our disaster alert app. You can be tracking. We have an unbelievable number of cyclones and hurricanes that are moving now, and uh, the tool can really help you. It's really not just for experts in the room and geospatial technologists, but for your family. We, we'd like to get them the tools they need to make the right decisions. But again, it's an exciting time. We can touch more on the AI revolution, which is happening. But again, to our colleagues at the, at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative and the Signal Initiative, that idea that we need to be really mindful of people's data and privacy, whether it's um, you know, whether it's from the humanitarian side or industry, and I think we could all learn a lot. But this idea that what David Jensen, Planet, and UNEP have put out recently, this idea of a digital ecosystem, is a, is a good read. So again, uh, beyond coding and other cool things we can do, that's also something to read on your next train ride or plane flight. I know we've got a few of those ahead of us. But this is the idea of what we do on a daily basis. You're going to, again, get the disaster alert app. If you're a humanitarian or an academic, um, we have a tool, and I can tell you more about it off offline. It's the EMOPS, the Emergency Operations Platform. It's a derivative of this disaster aware platform. EMOPS, E M O P S, look at EMOPS PDC. You can request access, and you will get these, these products that give you this idea of 
collective intelligence and analyses. We at PDC don't just pile up dots. I think we're very good at global alerting. Um, we are able to work, of course, the CAP alerting and other platforms that we work with WMO and other ISO and standardization organizations. But we're very good at modeling impacts, whether it's earthquakes, fires, floods. It's very personal. Like I said, with our colleagues who are in Indonesia and elsewhere, we have fires, floods, earthquakes in Maui. I'm from California. This is the Paradise Fire, the most expensive disaster from a couple years ago. I had family that were in this fire, lost homes. So we all do this because we are humanitarians and we want to do no harm and we want to innovate. So again, this is the idea of what we do. Next step is that idea of taking this torrent of digital news and making sense, which we can then put in the application, say, zoom to an area and say, show me if somebody puts in flu or somebody puts in earthquake, that social media can help inform that. And if you were to overlay open data from OpenStreetMap and then health sites, uh, what an exciting time that is. And as you said, getting to that idea of analyses the anchor of a lot of our work have been these regional partnerships. We have our colleagues here uh, from Hot OSM and in Indonesia and globally, and the InAware project. Again, it's the aware part of it, but this is in Indonesia. We have another project uh, called the PhilAware in the Philippines, and our colleagues who are kicking that off. Um, it really is an exciting time. So again, we can tell you more about that, but this idea of working with national stakeholders, um, we know that we have to, uh, the, even though we have a global platform, Every nation, every place, whether it's Nepal, the Philippines, to elsewhere, uh, we learn a lot and in collaboration, and open data is, is an anchor for that. Here you can take a look at what the InAware project, in conjunction with our USAID colleagues and uh, humanitarian open street map, you get this idea that also in a, in, a, in a climate change scenario, urban areas matter, and these dynamic urban areas in Indonesia, this project was so key to focus on these areas. So again, thank you to the team there. This is some background on how that process worked. And of course, again, it's a busy world, but again, when you look at some of these projects that we do collaboratively, we're so fortunate to partner with Humanitarian OpenStreetMap. Now moving over here, this is an idea, we were there just a few months ago, and again, you can see in working with our partners on the ground, that idea of also working with um, Peta Benchana and other, uh, other uh, local NGOs that are, again, leveraging uh, innovative startups. And I think that's what's a, a great lesson from this project of not only you know, Humanitarian OpenStreetMap, PDC, USAID, and a lot of, uh, a lot of local innovators is, is what's exciting about this ecosystem and it's built on relationships. So here's an idea of what we do, uh, again, in Indonesia and elsewhere. Kind of shining the flashlight ahead, and I know we have to be mindful of data privacy and other concerns, but um, you know, I'm an old GIS guy, did a lot of heads up digitizing in the mid 90s, uh, looking at some of the new uh, OpenStreetMap tools that can find those roads, that can digitize buildings, whether Microsoft doing it as well, some of our national labs, <coughs> colleagues at the Gates Foundation are also looking at that as well. It's a very exciting time where we can get to the more complex problems where AI can possibly help with that. So again, this is what's so exciting. Of course, we work hand in hand uh, with HDX. That is a foundational part of our ecosystem. So again, uh, I always say it's really, for us, and coming from Maui, it's a, it's a beach volleyball analogy. We do need all of these people on one side of the net to push the ball over. That'll be my last bad analogy for the day, I think. But again, from Humanitarian Open Street Map, um, we're so impressed with the UN Global Pulse, Pulse Lab Jakarta. Um, we have signed an MOU with them as well. We work closely with IDMC, we work with ACAPS, and we're growing that, that tent uh, of relationships to UNISAT as well. So again, we see that partnership is the foundation of what we do uh, at Pacific Disaster Center. So again, here's an idea of what we do. Here's some of the more uh, advanced analyses that really can tell you what's happening in real time. What are, more importantly than, uh, you know, I'm an old cartographer, I love the idea of maps, but what would be the actual impact? Sometimes the best mapping data is actually just a number, showing what will the impact be two days out when the hurricane hits, or in a fast onset tsunami, or other, other types of uh, disasters which we deal with all the time. We're also really excited, you know, we're working now with Facebook and their disaster map efforts, which was, of course, bridged by our colleagues at Nat Hope, John Crowley from Harvard, uh, IFRC, Heather Leston and other colleagues who are innovating, leading that idea of digital literacy. But again, our colleagues at Facebook are re really helpful in showing us where people might be moving during a disaster, the idea of connectivity. Right now, if we were to have uh, a flood in this area, could we make a phone call, something that simple? Or where, if there was a flood here on this campus, where might we relocate to? and where would the Red Cross want to put resources? So it's again, we really appreciate the work of industry, NGOs, academics. Um, probably my last bad analogy is I'm based in Switzerland quite often from Maui to Switzerland. We are kind of a Swiss army knife in that sense that we are a collaborative 
agreement with the University of Hawaii, we are a .org, but we work closely with the UN and with industry. And of course, like I said, we are recruiting, so we look forward to hearing more from those that might want to partner further. But this is where we're kind of going. You know, we went with this idea of, yeah, with the idea of chatbots. I was just at an AI event in Basel last week. And that idea of having so we don't have to even ch click on bot buttons. Imagine if your phone said, hey, I've sensed that there's a flood coming your way or there's a fire nearby. And it asks you maybe in multiple languages. I'm from Los Angeles. We speak 300 languages. The majority of Angelinos speak Spanish. You need to have the appropriate technology and languages as well. This is something working with the California Office of Emergency Services. Salesforce, uh, and again, the Red Cross as well. And this is kind of what we're looking at. So again, we also want to innovate with new technologies. Uh, we have so many partners in this room who we know are doing great things, so that's, that's uh, kind of our call to action. So ahead of mind, that's kind of an overview of what we do. You can find us again, PDC, PDC underscore global, on Facebook, take a look there. And of course, uh, you can also email us at info at pdc.org. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, so we do have time for any quick questions that anyone might have for Joel about PDC and all the amazing work that they're doing. And aloha and mahalo. Thank you. OK. Well, there's no question. Did you have a question? No. Thank you for the nice presentation, a good overview of all the technology, and of course we need data, but when it comes to your personal experience, what is your most urgent need where scientists or a community can help for you? you know, I think the most urgent need uh, that we see, uh, for us, I think it's also, I think I assess that, you know, and also we as an organization, we need to partner because right now in the Bahamas, we're really involved with the, the essential support function five, which is but we know that we can support other parts of that in an early onset disaster, research and rescue. It could be the health cluster that comes on our shelter. And I think, I think that's where we're very thankful with colleagues at OSHA and elsewhere. That idea of coordination, and now in the Bahamas, coordination is always a challenge, media was. So I think that's where maybe AI, um, and, and again, I'm going to be flying next week to work to meet up with a, a World Health Organization group trying to get emergency operations centers ready for whether it's a pandemic or other diseases. Um, I also think preparedness, and this is my one little call to action. Um, when we were doing Ebola 2014-15, there's a big map, and there's actually kind of a zone around the world where Ebola, is, your hemorrhagic fever, is, can happen in certain areas where it's fighting down. And I always say that, you know, with the right funding from partners and collaborations, we call that a spatial data you know, infrastructure, getting data ready ahead of time. Now, I will say, all disasters allow for innovation. We've all learned from Haiti. We're learning now in the Bahamas. We always learn. Uh, by these collaborations, but it's good to do preparedness and in, in the emergency response realm, um, it's kind of like exercise. You often exercise before the big event, and I think exercises and training beforehand, um, capacity building, I think the hot team is so great with that, that we want to, and I'm thinking of youth mappers and what a great initiative, building that pipeline to make sure people are prepared before. But those are just some my little I have a dream speech. I look forward to collaborating with you. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the audience? No? Okay. Well, thank you once again, Joel, for that. Um, Take care. Yeah.